Hi, this is uh, Sonu Satyadas. Today I am going to talk about the Microsoft Azure Block Service. In this, in this session, I am going dis to discuss about the Azure Block Storage, the, one of the uh, storage service options that we have in Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure, we have uh, different storage options. We have uh, Azure Disk Storage that is primarily used for the Azure IIS virtual machines. We have uh, a standard and premium options for the Azure Disk Storages. Means if you need a high performance virtual machines storage, you can go for premium or we can go with the standard storage disk as well. We also have a storage account service, which is uh, considered as one of the primary storage option for all our Microsoft services. Uh, if you are using uh, the app services, functions, or the uh, analysis services, AI solutions, for all the services, we are using the storage account as the primary storage option. The storage account is is a is a container service or it's a uh, umbrella service that op uh, provides four options uh, for storage, like uh, it offers a file share and a block storage, a table service, and the cube service. The file share service is primarily used as an SMB storage or network file share in our virtual machines or the uh, on-premise uh, systems uh, that we can primarily use to move the files uh, seamlessly from on-premise to cloud or from the virtual machines to another virtual machine. So wherever we want, we want to share the files across systems, we can use the file shares because it supports the SMB protocol, we can uh, map it as a network drive in our virtual machines as well as uh, uh, in our on-premise system. The virtual machine can be a Windows or Linux or uh, even Mac system also can use for uh, mapping this network file share. The other option that we have is the blob service, which is also considered as the object storage which uh, primarily used uh, for uh, storing the, the the unstructured objects like uh, we have audio files, uh, video files, documents, archives, and we can store almost any kind of files inside the block storage where we need to create a container and store those uh, files uh, inside the container. So any files that you are storing inside the block container is accessible over uh, an HTTP URL. Means simply you can use an HTTP URL to access those files, but we can enable or disable the public access to those files that we'll see uh, later. And uh, we also have uh, three types of uh, block files. We have page blocks, we have uh, block blocks and also we have the happen blocks. The block block is typically used for sequential file IO. Or most of the files like the audio, video, images, all these can go under this uh, block block category. And the page block is typically used for the virtual machine hard drive that is VHD files. If you are uploading a virtual machine uh, hard disk image, then you, you can use the, the page block. And the append blobs are primarily used as uh, a storage for log files. So if whenever you want to append any content to an existing log file, you can use the appended block. We'll talk more about this block services in uh, later. Uh, and uh, the storage account also provides a table API service, which is uh, which is a uh, no SQL key value pair database service. So developers can use this table API as a database because it stores the data 
in key value pair format. That means it's a no SQL database uh, storage in, in, in uh, storage account. And you can store uh, uh, terabytes of data into this uh, table API. But now, instead of using the storage account table API, we can use the Cosmos DB table API, which is providing the same uh, APIs for, for storing this NoSQL data. We also have a queue service and storage account, which is uh, used for application to application integrations. Means we want to de decouple the applications where one application can send some text messages and some other applications can receive those text messages and do some kind of processing. So whenever we create the applications in a publisher subscribe model, or uh, messaging patterns where one application is sending messages and the message may contain some information that the other application needs to execute. In such cases, we can use the queues, uh, which we are not going to discuss in this particular uh, session. We also have the other storage services like uh, we have data disk, we have the data lake store and many other services. But whatever storage services we use in Microsoft Azure, all these storage services provide some common features and functionality. All these provides durability. All of them offers encryption addressed. All these storage services provides a replication service or replication to other regions or other zones, fault tolerance, and automatic load balancing. When we talk about the blob storage, this is one of the, the, the commonly used uh, storage service in uh, Azure storage account, which is used for storing the unstructured data objects. We have different performance levels or performance options available for creating storage account. We can create either a standard storage or a premium storage. So if you are looking for a storage account with a high uh, redesigned performance, you can go for a premium storage. Or if you are looking for a general purpose storage, then you can go for a standard storage, which is mostly used in our uh, all common applications. When it comes to storage account type, the storage account can be created with uh, uh, storage account general purpose V1 or general purpose V2, or we can also create premium block blob storage, premium page blob storage also. But the premium block blob or the premium page blob, if you create, it is providing only a specific service type. That means if you create a premium block blob, it is just offering the block blob service. Uh, premium page blob is offering only the page blob storage. Also, we can create the premium file share, which is offering a file share storage. But, uh, but if I want to create a storage account with all the four functionalities, that means we have the file share, we have the block storage, we have the queue service, and also we have the table storage. If I want all the four features in a single storage account, you have to go and create the standard general purpose storage account. Whenever you create a storage account for the object storage or block storage, we are organizing our files or we are storing our files in multiple containers. Means inside a storage account, you can create multiple containers. A container is nothing but just acting like a root folder where you can store all of your files and subfolders. So inside the container, we can store any number of uh, file objects. 
For example, if you are creating a container called images, you can store uh, any number of images of any image type into that images containers. Similarly, if I have a videos container, you can store all kinds of video files inside that. You can also create containers for storing your archive files, for storing the documents and any other type of files. Means you can create a container and provide a access policy for this container or access level we can configure for this container. The access level can be a private or block or container. If you set the container access level as private, you are not allowed to access the files which is stored inside the container over a public HTTP URL. You cannot access those files using an HTTP URL. But if you want to provide the uh, file access externally over HTTP, then you have to set it as blob access level or container access level. Then what's the difference between the blob access level and container access level is, if you set the blob access level, you can access the files which is stored inside the container using HTTP, but you cannot list the files which is stored inside this container. That means you have the read permission over this uh, container files, but you don't have the list permission on this container. But if you go with the container level access, you can uh, read the files publicly using HTTP, and also you can enumerate the files or you can list the files which is stored inside this container. So for public access, you can either use blob or container level access for your uh, containers that you create. Typically that when we store the files inside a storage account, suppose if I'm creating my storage account in a region, it, uh, in, in, in my uh, Azure region, uh, it can be uh, uh, Central India, Southeast Asia, East Asia, East US, any region that you prefer. It also creates additional replicas. But where the replicas are created and how many replicas are created, based on that, we can choose different replication strategies. For any storage account that you create inside a region, automatically creates two additional copies. That means one primary copy and two replicas for every storage account that you create. It can be a general purpose. It can be a blob, premium blob, uh, or premium file share, anything that you create. It always creates two additional replicas within the same region. But if, you, if I want to create those two replicas only within the same region, within the same data center, we can choose locally redundant storage. So LRS, that is locally redundant storage, is one of the uh, replication strategy that is going to create two additional replicas in the same region, same data center. But the question, what will happen if the data center fails? If there is a disaster happens to your data center. So we can go for the next replication strategy. We can go for the next replication strategy. That is uh, zone redundant storage. In zone redundant storage, we are creating this replicas, the two replicas which are additionally created. It, it, they are created in geographically different zones within the same region. So within the same region, 
we are going to store them in different zone. That means the primary will be created in zone one. The secondary can be created in zone two and the zone three. What is the benefit of using zone based replication or ZRS is in case if the primary is down because your primary zone is uh, not available. You can still recover your data from the other zones. But what if the entire region is down? Means you have multiple zones, but you have uh, you have enabled the zone replication for your uh, storage. But what if the entire region is down? So to recover those uh, files, even if the region is down, we can go with geo redundant storage. Geo redundant storage means you are creating uh, three replicas. That means primary and two replicas in the primary region and also additional three replicas will be created in a different region, which is called as paired region. So Microsoft already defined the paired region for every every Azure region. Like uh, for Southeast Asia, we have East Asia. For Central India, we have uh, South India. For East US, we have West US. Like that for every region, we have the paired region. So three copies will be created in in, in a primary region and additional three copies will be created in the secondary region. That means total six copies will be created, but all the read and write happens only in the primary region. And this primary region's primary copy is accepting all the read and write requests, and those requests will be uh, synchronously uh, updated in the replicas within the same region and it is asynchronously replicating to the replicas in the other region. But in case if the primary region is down, you are not allowed to read from the second region because second region is only used as a backup. You can restore your data from the second. But we have another option that is read access geo redundant option in which in case if the primary region is down, you can read the data from the secondary region. But now Microsoft has come up with two more replication strategies. That is GZRS and uh, RAGZRS, in which the primary region is uh, containing zone based replication and the same data is replicated to a different region. Okay, where you may not have the uh, zone replication. So that means in the primary region, we have the zone replication. And in secondary region, we have another three copies. So we can say it's a combination of zone based replication for the primary region and a geo redundant replication. Means we have another three copies in the secondary region. When it uh, comes to the object storage. Suppose if I want to store my files into the blob storage, I can store different types of files. Sometimes I store the files which are very frequently accessed. Maybe some images that is used in my web applications or some uh, documents which I frequently use in my applications. But in some cases, I can store some files which uh, may not be used very frequently. 
Yes, it may be used uh, maybe once in a month or twice in a month. There are some other files which may use very rarely. That means we are using those files maybe once in a year or twice in a year. That means we are not going to use those files very frequently. But do we need to pay for all these files in the same manner? Not necessary. Depends on the tier that we select. We can pay different amounts. That means if the file is a frequently accessed file, we can store that file into a hot tier. The hot tier is optimized for frequent read write access. So the read write cost is comparatively low, but the storage cost is high because that hot tier is designed, optimized for frequent read write access, not for dumping your data. But we have Another tier called pool tier, which is used for infrequently accessed files. Means if you are not frequently accessing those files, then you can put those files into pool tier, where the storage cost is less compared compared to the hot tier, but the read write cost is little high compared to the hot tier. But what if I have a backup file, which I'm not going to use uh, uh, regularly or infrequently also? Very, very rarely I'm using those files. So, for example, I have some backups data, some archival data. Such things I can put into an archival tier. So archive tier is used for storing the rarely accessed data in which uh, the Storage cost is comparatively very, very cheaper uh, compared to the hot tier or cool tier. But there will be a latency for reading those files, means you cannot frequently or very easily read the data from the archival tier. It may take time to read the data from the archive tier. So, it depends on your storage requirement. You can store your data either into a store hot tier or cool tier or into an archive tier. But in some cases, we store some kind of files. It may be a, a, record, a report or some kind of uh, archival data or some kind of documents that I store. In the initial period, we may use those files very frequently, but over the time, the, the, the frequency of accessing that files will reduce. And after some time, we will never go and access those files. Maybe we will access those files, uh, maybe once in a year or twice in a year only. In that case, Whenever I want to access the files frequently, that means in the initial period, I can put that files into the hot tier. And later I can move these files into the cool tier. And later I can move those files into the archive tier for saving the money or for saving the cost. But do I need to manually move this file from one tier to another tier? It's not necessary. The Microsoft Azure storage is providing the life cycle policies where you can configure some conditions which will allow you to move your files from one tier to another tier. So you can say, yes, whenever I upload a file, by default it goes into hot tier. And after 15 days, or 30 days of inactivity or 30 days after 30 days, I want to move this data into cool tier. And after 60 days or 90 days or 150 days, I want to move that files to archive tier. And even I can say when this files need to be deleted. Suppose if I'm not going to use this file 
for five years. So after five years, I want to delete those files. This policy, this conditions you can configure. So you don't need to manually move the files from one tier to another tier. The files will be automatically moved from hot tier to cool, from cool to archive, and from archive tier you can directly delete those files. So the transition of this files can be in this way means from hot tier you can move the files to a cool tier from cool tier you can move the file to an archive tier or back to the hot tier from hot tier you can directly move the files to an archive tier and you can directly delete the file from hot tier to uh, when delete the file from hot tier and it, it is also possible to delete the files that is stored in premium storage premium storages are by default optimized for uh, frequent read write access that means it's by default in hot tier so let's see how this can be done in practical so how we can create a uh, storage account and how we can store the files in uh, storage account. For that, you can see this is my Azure portal. I have logged into my Azure portal. The first thing that I need to do for uh, creating resources is to create a resource group. I also I already have lots of resource groups created for different solutions for different purposes. But for this demo, I'm going to create a new resource group. A resource group is nothing but it's a logical group that is used for putting all your resources inside uh, in a single place. But the resources can be in different location, but you can manage them uh, using a single resource group. So I'm going to create the resource group name. Demo group. Location I'm going to specify as Southeast Asia. Let's create this. Yes, my uh, resource group is created. The demo group is created. And inside this uh, resource group, I'm going to create a storage account. I can either go to this create button inside this resource group or I can go to the home page and choose the create a resource. Here I will get the option for creating a storage account. Here you can see the storage account option. I can select storage account. Then I can specify the configuration parameters such as subscription resource group name so i will select the resource group that i have created just now that is demo group i can specify a storage account name the very very important thing is any storage account that you that you create must have a un unique name because the storage account name will be a part of the domain name and that domain name should be globally unique. For example, if I want to create a storage account with a name uh, such as XYZ, so the domain name for your storage account will be xyz.core.windows.net. So if I'm using uh, blog storage, it will be xyz.blog.core.windows.net. So it has to be unique. So I'll just go and specify uh the name and you have to give the name in lowercase with maximum of 23 characters so i'll give uh, i'm just giving the name as by stream storage so if the name is already taken by somebody else you may get a warning or error message here that the name is not available so I'm going to create this resource also in uh, Southeast Asia. 
The performance tier, I can select standard or premium, but I go with this standard, which is the default for general purpose storages. The redundancy option, as I have mentioned, we have locally redundant storage, which creates only three copies within the data center. Then we have zone redundant storage, which is uh, creating three copies across multiple availability zone within the region. We have GRS, which is creating uh, six copies, three in the primary region and three in the secondary region. And we also have Geo Zone Redundant Storage, which is GZRS, which is also creating six copies, three in the primary with uh, zone replication and uh, three in the secondary region. And for GRS and GZRS, we can also use the read access for the secondary region when the primary is unavailable. So I'll go with the GRS, but I don't want the RAGRS feature. So I'll just go with the GRS. Then click on next. I can configure the security options, like I can say secure transfer for REST API operations required, block public access required, storage account key access required, the active directory authentication in the portal. It's not mandatory, we can directly authenticate with our uh, account. Then minimum TLS version 1.2, and we can also integrate the data lake storage. I am not going with that. Go to the networking here, we can say whether our storage account is accessible uh, from all the networks, including external networks, or it need to be accessible only from selected VNets within the, uh, the, the Azure account. So if I want to make it accessible only from the uh, virtual networks that I prefer, then I can go with this option, enable public access from selected virtual networks, or if I don't want the public access, I can disable the public access. But I say I want the public access from anywhere. So I'll go with the first option. Next, here I can specify some of the recovery options like uh, do I need to uh, enable the soft delete option for blobs and containers and file shares? That means if I delete a blob or a container, will it go to uh, deleted item section like a recycle bin and from there I can restore the data within specific number of days. So this is uh, helping you uh, to protect your data uh, from the accidental deletion. Suppose if you have accidentally deleted something and you want to restore that or you want to recover that, you can enable the soft delete option. But I would go with the default selections you can also see the tracking. That means you can enable versioning for your blocks. Means if you overwrite the file, or the, the same block of files with another one, the old ones will be considered as older versions, and you can store multiple versions of the same blocks. So always you'll be accessing the latest version through the main URL, and for accessing the other versions you can go to the blog version section and you can download that particular version so i want to enable versions so i'll select versions and also i can enable change feed it means if you are performing any create delete update operations in your blogs do you want to track those changes what what are the changes happen to your blobs and containers that can be recorded inside the change feed. So I want to do that, so I'll enable this change feed for all these files or for all the operations. And I, I, can, I want to keep that all logs. If you want to delete this after a specific number of days, I mean those log files you want to delete after a specific number of days, then you can say the, select the second option and specify the number of days. I'll go with this first option. 
here we have the option for encryption means i said in the beginning that every storage account is by default providing server side encryption that can be used uh, that can that encryption can be done using a microsoft managed encryption key or a customer managed encryption key so here you can see the microsoft managed encryption key is the default which means the encryption key is provided by microsoft and is managed by microsoft but if you have your own key in the key vault you can select the second option that is customer managed uh, key and you can select a key from the key vault but i don't want to go with any any kind of encryption option i will directly review and create uh, let me create this it's yes you can see the validation is passed and i want to create this so this may take uh, a minute or two to create this uh, storage account once your storage account is created you can start uploading files to the uh, containers it means you need to go and create block containers you can also use the other services like the file share queues and tables but here we are discussing only about the block storage so we can create the containers which is acting like a, a root folder for your files yes you can see the storage account is created i'll go to the storage account and here you can see the options uh, the configuration options like the what uh, the resource group the location southeast asia and you can see the secondary location is east asia because we have selected the grs geo replication so the primary location is southeast asia and secondary is east asia and we can also see the four storage options below here you can see the block service file share that is file service queue and the table now i'm going to create a new container so i'll go to the container from the disk storage option you can see by default there are two containers created and this is used for storing the logs that is uh, used for versioning and the change tracking or change feed storage. Since these are built-in containers, I don't want to delete or modify this. I'll go and create a new container. Let's go and click on this plus container, and you can specify the name of the container. So I can specify something like uh, my docs. That means my documents. And I can specify the public access level. As I have mentioned earlier, it can be private, blog, or container. Blog and container is offering anonymous access, that is public access without any uh, keys. You don't need to specify any kind of authorization tokens or keys for accessing the files. But if you make it private, you cannot directly access those files you have to supply some kind of authentication tokens. So currently I'll go with the blog and create a container. Yes, you can see the my docs container is created. I'll go inside the my docs and start uploading some files. So I can click on this upload and select some files from my system. So I'm going to select uh, maybe some the same uh, PPT. So let's upload. But before uploading, if you want, you can choose the storage tier. So the default storage tier is hot. But if you want to upload it as a pool or archive, you can do that. And you can also change the file type or block type in the page or append type. But by default, it's block block type, and it is recommended for VHD files, that is virtual hard drive for your virtual machines. It is recommended to use 
page blocks. So I'll go with all the default options. That means block, block with a hot access tier. And I can upload this file. So here you can see the two files uploaded successfully. And if I want to access these files, I can simply select this file, which keeps the uh, details about these files. In the overview section, you can see the properties of this file, including the HTTP URL. And below you can see the metadata. That means if the user want to add some additional metadata information that can be provided here. You can see the versions means if you have uploaded multiple versions of this file, that versions, the previous versions you can see here, but this is the first upload so that there is no old versions here. So that you can uh, see there is no old versions available. You can explicitly take snapshot also, but we don't have any snapshot because we just created the storage. So what I'm going to do, I'll take the URL, means I'll copy this URL, and I go to another browser tab and say paste and go. You can see I'm able to access my file. This is the, this is the PowerPoint presentation that I have uploaded, and I'm, I'm able to access that file directly without providing any kind of uh, access tokens. But look at that. What will happen if I change the access level to private? Here you can see my docs container. The access level is by default blob. I want to change this to private and say OK. Now I'm going to take this URL again and trying to access this file. You can see when I made this private, it's saying an error that a resource not found. That means it, it is not allowing me to go and access these files directly using this URL. So you can also change the access tiers. Like you can see the default access tier is hot. But what if I want to change the access tier to maybe cool or archive for individual files, you can go and change the access tier. For example, the first file I'm selecting and you can click on this change tier. And from here, I can change this to cool and save. You can see the access tier is changed to uh, cool. But if you don't want to go and perform this uh, operation for individual files each and every time, you can configure the lifecycle policies. So if you go to the data management, here we have an option called the lifecycle management, where you can configure the rules for uh, changing the access tier periodically. That means you can create a rule. And you can say, I want to create a rule with the name rule one. And it is applicable for all the blocks in my storage account. Or I can apply this rule to a selected list of blocks using filters. But I will not go with that to make it simple. I will say, OK, I want to apply this for all the blocks in the storage account. And this rule is applicable to only the block blocks, not for page blocks or append blocks. So for page blocks are not uh, applicable here, but if you want, you can optionally select the append blocks. So I'll select uh, only the block blocks, which means this rule is applicable only for uh, block blocks. And for the block subtype, I want to apply these rules only to the main blocks not for the snapshots or the old versions. Click on next. Here I can specify the condition for base block transition. I can say if 
the last modified value or the number of days is more than maybe 15 days, I want to do what? I want to move this file to food here. You can add more conditions here. You can add if the base block were last modified more than maybe 90 days, I want to move this to archive here. And I can add additional condition that if the file is uh, not modified more than 365 days, just delete that file, which means I can create the, the rules Like if the base block is not modified in 15 days, move to the full storage. If the base block is not modified in 90 days, then move to archive storage. If the base block is not modified in 365 days, just delete that file. Let's add this rule and that's going to create a life cycle policy or life cycle rule that will automatically move your files in the container or in the storage account from one tier to another tier based on the uh, configuration that you have done. So that's the end of uh, this particular session. So thanks everyone.